Erica, enough is enough. You can't keep living like this. You have your lights on every night. What? Don't play dumb with me, I've seen you. You lock yourself in your room all day and stay up until dawn with the lights blazing. You never sleep. You never do anything. You're wasting your life away. You're too old for this. You need to get out of that room and get your act together and start living like an adult. Wait, you've been spying on me? You've been checking on my room at three in the morning? I'm not spying on you, you moron. I'm just worried about you, okay? Worried about what? Worried about you growing up. You need to learn how to be a responsible adult. And that means getting enough sleep, keeping your room clean, finding a decent job that will get you out of the house. But I have a job. I've told you a million times that I'm a remote worker. I can work from my bedroom. Remote worker. That's a joke. <laughs> All you do is sit on that laptop making peanuts. It's not a real job. It's not work. You're just hiding in your room doing nothing. Here we go again. You don't get it. You don't understand what I do. Fine, just leave me alone and let me do my work. My work is all that matters. I'm not gonna leave you alone. And I'm not gonna let you rot in that room. You have to grow up someday. Mom and dad won't be around forever, you know. What if they die and you're still helpless? Then what? Then I'll have to take care of you and I don't want that. That's why I'm trying to help you now. You don't have to worry about that. It won't happen. Trust me, I don't need your help. I don't need anyone's help. I'm fine on my own. Yeah, right, you're just lying to yourself. I'm gonna make sure you become a proper adult. Even if it kills me, I want you to have a real life, a real job. Or I swear to God, this is not the end of it. I won't stop nagging you until you grow up. Can you guys just cut it out? Harold, I'm sick of your wife nagging me all the time about how I live my life. I don't need her comments and I don't care what she thinks. This is mom and dad's house too, so she has no right to complain. You're kidding me. She's still in your case? What did you do this time? Usually I go to bed early during the week, but this week I've been staying up until 3 in the morning to finish some urgent work, and she has the nerve to say that I shouldn't be a night owl at my age and that my lifestyle is sloppy and my room is a disaster. What? I've been keeping quiet about it, but I have to tell you. Do you know that she watches me from the upstairs window whenever I go out? She stares at me as I leave the yard and as I come back. And when I get inside, she told me that if I could go to the store to buy stuff for myself, I should also get a job there. And she says it with such a smug tone. Really? And lately, she's been spreading rumors about me to the neighbors. She tells them that I'm some kind of recluse who never leaves her bedroom. And because of that, whenever I take out the trash, they all look at me like I'm a freak. I've had enough of this. I can't believe she's doing all that. I'm so sorry, Erica. I've been trying to explain to Audrey what kind of work you do. But she never listens to me. Today, she told me that I'm probably making minimum wage with work I'm doing. I thought it was normal to work remotely nowadays, right? How can someone her age be so ignorant about it? I guess she thinks that remote work is only for people who live in big cities or crowded places. She doesn't get how you can work remotely when we live in such a small rural town. So she assumes that you're just a shut-in. Hold on. It's because we live out here that I work remotely. We live in the 21st century where almost everyone has internet access, which allows me to work from here. I've tried to tell her that. And I've told her that you make enough money to live on your own if you wanted to. But she said that since you still live with mom and dad, you can't be making that much. That's why she's convinced that you're making minimum wage. Or maybe even less. She probably thinks I'm making a few hundred bucks a month, which is crazy because I'm making over $10,000 every month. I don't want to tell her how much you make because that might make things worse. But maybe I should. I doubt it'll make any difference. She won't believe us. She'll think we're lying since no one who lives out here makes $200,000 a year. I guess that's true. I think she's made her mind up about me. She's just going to keep calling me a shut-in. She wants to impress everyone as the new wife in town. That's why she's lying to the neighbors about me, right? She wants them to think that she's so wonderful as your wife that she's even trying to help me grow up in her eyes. I'm so sorry about what Audrey's doing. I don't really want you apologizing to me for what she's doing, Harold. Just from now on, I'd like for her to stop getting in the way of me and my work. It's because of her and her actions towards me that I've been having trouble focusing. And it's begun to set me back. All right. I'll tell her to stay away from your room from now on. Okay? How's it going, Erica? I'm sure you've noticed that your room is looking a whole lot better than it did before, right? Are you going to tell me that you've gone into my room again without my permission? Well, for a while now, I've been interested in that room of yours. I've been told by both your parents and by Harold now not to go near your room anymore. But when it comes to a shut-in, like you in your room, it's like a pigsty in there. So I thought as your brother's wife, I should clean it up a little for you. If I'm not asking you to go in there, then please refrain from going near my room. 
Also, where are my things right now? I think you went past the point of just cleaning up my room, as there's literally nothing in here now. Anything I thought I could make a little money off of, I sold. What? You sold it all? You even sold the laptop that was on my desk in here? Oh, well, that thing being in your room was the main reason you'd never get out of there or get a job. So I took that useless piece of garbage and made you some money off of it. Now you'll finally be forced to leave your room and go find a real job. You have been lying to me. Why the hell would you sell my work laptop like that? Also, I was told something by your mom. You're living here with both your parents still, yet you've never paid rent or anything. Being the age you are now, it's not okay to take advantage of your parents like that. So I took all the money that I made off those things and handed it to your parents as rent for the years you've spent living here. There is no freaking way all of this is happening to me. What the hell is wrong with you, Audrey? You were told by everyone in this house to specifically not come near my room. And what's worse than you not even listening to anyone is the fact that you sold all of my things for work. I've had enough of this, all right? Huh? What things for work of yours did I sell? That laptop was only being used for gaming, and I know it. You're lost because you're a shut-in. I told you, I'm not just some shut-in. How many more times am I going to have to tell you that? I've even given you my business card, explaining to you who I am and what my job description is. If you still can't find a way to believe me, even after I've shown you, then how about you give my company a call and ask? Then you could find out if I'm really working a so-called real job or not. There is nothing in it for me to waste my time calling them. And let's be honest, you really think someone like you is going to be working for a company based in New York City and working remotely in this town? Oh, I don't even have any friends out here who believe you could work remotely in this town. Well, your friends had all better start believing it because I really am working remotely for that company. I was able to make it into a company like that because I gave it my all in school and I worked for years to get into a position that allowed me to work from home. And for a while now, I've been living a happy life at home with my parents, making lots of money working from my room. But now it's all been ruined by some know-it-all, and I'm not going to forgive you for any of this. Why are you getting so upset with me? You can't be getting that upset with me just because I sold your favorite gaming laptop. I guess this goes to show that you really were doing nothing but gaming while hiding away in that room. Huh? Let me keep telling you that no matter how much you cry and whine, this was all your fault because you never grew up and got a job. I'm totally in the right for selling all your things in order to pay your parents back. Well then, I'm selling this house. I cannot stand having you living in the same house as me. If you really cannot stand living with me to the point you'll sell all of my things, then I'll take this one step further and sell the place. But when that happens, good luck to you and my brother, because you won't have a place to live anymore. Now get all of your things together and get out of here! Huh? What are you going on about now? You want to sell this house? You don't have any right to sell your parents' house. Don't you dare start saying such baseless crap because you're upset with me. I do have the right to sell this place, though. This house is my house, after all. If anything, not even my parents have the right to sell this place. What? This house is yours, Erica? When talking to my parents about moving back in with them, we decided to have a larger house built that would be more open for all of us. And when having this house built, I was the one to pay for it all. Yet, after handing away all of my money for a house like this and having my name on it, why do I have to be the one treated like crap by someone I let stay here? If this is how things are going to be, Audrey, then this whole house is going away and I'll move somewhere else. Well, wait a second there. What? What the hell have you been going on about? Seriously? You said this house is yours and that you paid for the whole house to be built? Um, a shut-in would never have the ability to do something like that. That's why I've been telling you that I'm not some shut-in. I am a woman making $200,000 a year. I make all that money just by sitting on my computer and working from home all day. And living out in the countryside means that someone like me making that kind of money can go all out building a house. Because the land and everything is cheaper. What? You're making $200,000 a year? Erica, you're really making that much? You have heard about everything from my brother already. He told you that I'm making enough. If I lived on my own, I'd never have to worry about money. Yet, you choose to think that I was only making a couple of grand a year when really, I'm making over $10,000 a month. And with a bonus added to that each year, I'm at $200,000. That's a lie. Living all the way out here? There's no way you're making that much. I knew that you'd never come around to believing me even now, but this is all the truth. And you'd better start understanding that right now. If you are still finding it so hard to believe me, then give that company a call and that's on my business card. You can talk with them about all the work I'm doing, about how I'm working remotely right now, and about the kind of money I'm making in my position currently. But there's no way. At the start, I had planned on buying an older house and renovating it for my parents and me to move into. But then my brother heard about it and asked if you could both move in with us. So to make things better, I just had that older house torn down and had a brand new house built. What? 
My brother was fine moving into the renovated house with us before, but you wanted a larger place somewhere. You could have kids and not have to worry about rooms and all that stuff. So you told him the only way you'd come back with him to live with his parents again was if there was a larger house involved. So there you go. That's why this brand new house was built using all my money. You had said that to him before, right? You wanted a larger house to live in if you were going to be moving in with his parents. Um. Harold came to us instead of you though, asking that we have a brand new house built. Also, you'd be allowed to move back in with my mom and dad. He explained to us that you guys didn't have the money either to help out with the new house, but said that by being with us, it would help out come time for you to have kids. He really wanted for you to be happy moving in with his parents, and this was the only way that could happen. But I... My parents and I accepted what he said and changed the plans of renovating the house into building a brand new one. All because you wanted that. My parents were excited about the future, where they could live with their grandkids. And I was happy to have you guys around with whatever cute kids you'd have. But back then, I never thought you'd be such a monster and subject me to so much hell while living in my house. Uh, wait. This whole time, who did you think was paying for such a house as this? It couldn't have been you. My brother and my parents don't have the money for it. So it's been me the whole time. That's why when you asked my mom if I was paying her any rent to stay here, she said no. I'm the one paying for everyone to live here. I made an agreement with my parents that if I were to pay for the place by myself, then I'd get to make the rules and not have to owe anything to anyone. So now why do I have to have all my things sold and that money handed over to my parents as rent? Oh no, wait, that was... The only reason I haven't made my brother pay for anything is because I'm a really nice little sister. I knew that you both had been thinking about kids and I wanted you guys to save up for the future with them. So to save you guys, especially you from being so stressed out, I told your husband no thank you when he offered to pay a part of the bills. Is that so? Yet, even after all of this, I have the one woman I've been so nice to calling me a shut-in. You called me a lost cause as well, right? Even though I'm the one working as the breadwinner in this whole dang house. Everyone's even tried explaining my situation to you. But you just ignore all of that, instead telling the neighbors that I'm some sort of freeloading loser. I'm surprised it's taken me this long to finally reach my boiling point. Hold on, Erica. Now, I'd like for you to get all of your things together and start preparing for when you have to leave this house. But if you want some advice from me, maybe selling it all and using that money for a new house is a better idea. You already know how to sell things so easily, so you should be able to make some money off of all your things, no problem. So hurry it up. I'm so sorry, Erica. I already heard about what's going on from Audrey. I never thought things like this would turn out so bad for us. I promise that I will pay you back for all those things of yours. Audrey has been saving up some money for a little while now, so I'll be using that money to pay you back. So please, do not get too worked up over this. Then I'll definitely be taking that money from you. But as for things with her, I just couldn't handle them anymore. So I'm going to ask both of you to still move out of this house. I've already talked with mom and dad about my decision and I'm having this house sold. What? You just had this place built not too long ago. This is all because Audrey went all around the neighborhood saying that I'm a shut-in and that I'm a lost cause. Even mom and dad have to deal with the embarrassment of all those lies now. So we have to get out of here, especially now that they know the truth about how Audrey has been lying and are now calling mom and dad idiots for letting something like that happen here. Is, is that so? Of course. I'm bringing mom and dad along with me to the new house I plan to buy, so don't worry about what'll happen to them. As of right now, they're both working hard to make sure we have a place to move into here really soon. They would like to live in a large apartment this next time around, even possibly a condo or something if we really like to. They're going over all of that right now with the realtor. We'll see if both you and mom and dad are okay with moving out. Then I can't say anything against it. I'm sure having to deal with Audrey after this by yourself is going to be a real pain. But do your best not to go insane. Sure, I'll try my best with her. Actually, this is the perfect time for me to bring up a divorce to her. I plan to make her responsible for all that's happened as she is. And then get it kicked out of this family. What? You plan to get a divorce now, Harold? Actually, it's because of her that there's been some trouble for me at work. I've kept this all a secret from you. But I'm actually at my limits with her as well. I'm gonna use you being upset with her as cover. Make that my get-out plan from this marriage. She's got trouble for you at work as well? What the hell did she do to you there? When things are calmed down a bit, I'll tell you. For right now, I need to get to kicking around of this house. I plan to be out of this house myself sometime this week. So she needs to get out. How could this happen, Erica? Harold just told me he wants a divorce. He said that he hates me. He said that I've destroyed his family and his career. 
and that he doesn't need me anymore. I heard from him that you did something to mess up his work. I didn't do anything to him. I was just being his wife and trying to make friends with people in the neighborhood. And while, while chatting with them, I mentioned what kind of work he does. But how does that make him want to divorce me? Well, you must have done something really bad for him to want that, right? What the hell did you say about his work that caused him so much trouble? I just said that my husband's a hairstylist. I said that he studied at a school in New York City and then came back to town to work. So I asked him to please go and check him out and see how good he is and said that if they told him my name that I sent him that he'd give him all kind of perks. I'm pretty sure that's why. You can't promise them all kinds of perks without asking him first. What? What's wrong with that? I was trying to be a good wife by bringing him more customers and making friends. And Harold's so good he can even cut your dad's hair. Cutting hair is way more than just cutting your dad's hair. My dad hardly has any hair left, so you're giving Harold too much credit and using that as an excuse for him to give away free stuff. But... From what I've heard, Harold has had to give out about a hundred free haircuts to people from all over town because of you. Do you think that's supporting him? What? I didn't know that. That's because you said he'd give them some special things if they said you referred them. Some of the customers were so angry with him that they threatened to report him for fraud if he didn't give them a free haircut. Harold said that almost everyone in town got a free haircut from him and that more are coming. All because of you, your husband is losing money and reputation because of you. No way. And as if that wasn't enough, you also screwed me over. After calling me a shut-in and doubting my work for so long, Harold has been trying to get you two out of here. He's been saving up for a place that you two can enjoy. But you've ruined his business, and now he can't afford it. And recently, you took everything from my room and sold it, including the things I use for work. I think you deserve this. His wanting a divorce is totally justified. I was just trying to be a good wife. I wanted to make sure that your parents liked me since I've been living with them. I wanted to help their shut-in daughter find a job. And I wanted to support my husband's business. And I wanted everyone in this town to know who I am and what I stand for. Why don't you go and ask all those people you've been sucking up to what they really think of you? Ask them if it was okay to insult your sister-in-law, who makes 200000 a year, and call her a shut-in and a failure. Ask them if it was smart to sell up all my stuff and give the money to my parents as rent. And ask them if it was fair to ruin your husband's business by giving away free haircuts to everyone. I want you to ask them if they think you're such a wonderful wife. But... I know you're trying to be a good wife for my family, but you've done nothing but screw things up. And you're mocking your sister-in-law for something you don't understand, which makes you a horrible person. I know life is tough for you when you live in a free house and don't have a job, but maybe you should think twice before you mess with other people's lives. But I want everyone to like me as the good wife I am. I don't have many friends and I wanted to make some here. If that's what you wanted, then you shouldn't have hurt other people to get it. I hope you're ready for what's coming next as a wife. Good riddance! Audrey panicked about her fate and begged the neighbors to help her, but they told her that she lied to them about what her husband could do for them, and they turned their backs on her. And soon after that, my brother divorced her. When I put the house on the market, Audrey's parents came to the open house and apologized for their stupid daughter's actions and offered to buy the house from me. They moved in with their daughter, but they never stopped berating her for not taking out the trash or for leaving the lights on all the time. And they always ended by saying that it was no surprise that Harold dumped her. After the divorce, my brother embraced his single life and focused on his work. He told all the customers that Audrey had sent him that he would do their hair for free this time, but they would have to pay next time. And he also said sorry for the lies that Audrey had told them about the deal. And after a month of doing that, he started to see people coming back for their second cut and paying him for his service. As for my parents and me, we moved to a beach town where we could enjoy the sand and the sea all the time. And we all loved this condo we bought while chilling in the sun.